Let's talk about Oregon's drug crisis for a moment. Earlier this year, the Oregon legislature took apart Measure 110 and recriminalized drugs. They did it through House Bill 4002. Now, the recriminalization part doesn't start until September 1st, but other parts of the law are already kicking in now. 4002 directed the Chief Justice of the Oregon Supreme Court to look at pretrial release guidelines for drug crimes, sometimes serious. This week, Chief Justice Megan Flynn made a big change. She ordered that people arrested and accused of those crimes must now stay in jail until they make their first court appearance. That puts those offenses on the same category as violent felonies and sex crimes. The former system was really a mess. Many called it catch and release because accused criminals got out of jail so fast. We talked about it a lot on this show. Here's an example from last year. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office seized more than 50 pounds of powdered fentanyl in a single major drug bust. It was the largest bust for the agency and one of the largest in the state history. The drug team estimated that the seized fentanyl is the equivalent of 11 million doses. So, of course, you would think whoever's behind that would probably stay off the streets, right? Wrong. The suspected ringleader, 23-year-old Luis Fuenez, was arrested and then released shortly afterwards. Then, you know, he failed to show up for court. He was arrested again a few days later and charged with a long list of drug crimes. Okay, so that was then, but now catch and release is over. People charged with the most serious drug crimes will be held in jail until their arraignment. Those are crimes that including delivery or manufacture of controlled substances, selling or giving drugs to minors, but also failure to appear in court, resisting arrest, attempting to get away from the police. They all have to wait in jail for their first appearance in court, which is the first court day after the weekend or no more than 36 hours after they've been arrested. Now, we talked to Washington County District Attorney Kevin Barton about this today. He was a big proponent of changes to Measure 110, and he says this is a big step forward when it comes to dealing with drug dealers. This will directly address the catch and release problem that is so frustrating to those in law enforcement, but also in our community. Uh, you know, the police will come, they'll make an arrest, uh, they'll book that person in jail, and sometimes within hours or a day or two, that person is right back on the street committing that same crime or another crime. So this change will directly address that by essentially allowing the, the jail to hold that person in custody until the first court appearance, the arraignment. A suspect can still be released after that first appearance, but Barton says having the extra time in jail buys prosecutors time to figure out who the person is and how dangerous they might be. And he says more still needs to be done and that House Bill 4002 still has some holes that do need to be filled. Uh, we've already identified there are some pretty significant challenges, even with the fix. So what we've now come to learn is despite the best intentions of the legislature, there's not enough funding to support what they've uh, outlined is called a deflection program. That's the diversion programs before someone gets to court. Uh, it is significantly underfunded and communities across Oregon are struggling with how to make ends meet when we know there's not enough money uh, in, in the mix to, for that to occur. So I feel like if we have the adequate resources, if we have enough gas in the tank to get to our destination, we can do it. But we need to get those funding, those resources in play, whether it's for a deflection program or an adequately funded jail or an adequately funded justice system. That's what's necessary for this to work.